Oh no! Oh no! Oh, wake up! Oh. There's this uh, there's this guy on Instagram. His name is Beast Labs, and he like set up this like really fun thing. And I was like, damn, that's a really good idea. And he makes these like little like toys, like this Beavis ring. Okay. And then and they he puts them in like a <clears throat> uh, one of these little thingies. And then he has like a little gumball machine full of these little toys and they're like random and some of them are like E.T. and some of them are like the pick of destiny. And for some reason, some of them are Beavis and Butthead rings (laughs) and you give him like 10 bucks and he'll give you two of them and he'll film he'll film himself like putting the quarter in and turning it. So and then whatever one he pulls out is yours and it'll be he'll tag you in it. And he'll tag you in the video and then post it. It was a really fun gimmick. That's cute. I was was like, that, that's a really cute, fun gimmick. Was that Rest two quarters to that you just took? Is that two yeah. quarters that you had there, Steve? Or was that one quarter and it came with both of them? Well, you give him 10 bucks mm-hmm. and he oh. gives you two. So it was two quarters. Yeah. So you, so it you, was got, a, so you got Lucky and got Beavis and Butter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Mm. Look at you. Seems rigged. Yeah. I watched it. I watched I mean, the video. <laughs> and a whole gumball machine. You got the first two times Beavis and then Butthead. Fake news. Yeah. Mm. Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with your Beat my ass. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Uh, how y'all doing? You know, 8.30 Sunday morning. Let's go. That's how we Let's do it, go. dude. What'd you guys do Saturday night? What'd you do last night? Oh man, go. I watched I watched oh. the last Airbender live action show for the second time. The second time? The first time. episode. The first episode for the second time. You watched so you the like episode, wow. t- first episode twice. Mm. It's awful. Oh. It's so, so bad. Man, I really thought you were going to say awesome. And when no. awful, like awful really messed with my senses, I was like, oh, what? So me and well, Ellie watched it like a couple days ago. And then her friends hadn't seen it yet. So we all watched it together and we're just constantly. It's one of those shows where you're just constantly making fun of everything that happens in it. Elliot's it's a, really bad. Elliot's a big Avatar, The Last Airbender fan. Yeah. yeah. And you haven't watched it yet. I watched a lot of the production updates on it. Yeah, and just mm. the I was like, look at the direct the the paint the arrow on the head of him is going. Well, I thought straight. about you first. I thought about you first when it There's when a they moment. announced the live action one. Yeah, well, I was, I was on, like, oh, I wonder embargo. if Elliot cares. Yeah. Oh, oh, you knew a screener. Yeah, and I sent oh. uh, sent them around people, and it was crazy. It was. I was and like, you did a is... set visit back in October of 2021, I think, right? I, I did right at the height of COVID when they were really popping off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> just hanging around with those actors. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that 2021 was not? Well, it was the height of COVID, right? Was 2021 yeah. the height of COVID? Okay, right. yeah, I think so. I, I mean, so. I don't know about October though. I don't that know. would have been like a remember. year and a half after it started. Yeah, I guess that would be wrong. I think. Let me, anyway, look, it, let me look it up. Yeah, let's let's look, look, look so, this up. so it's bad. You don't like this um, program? Dude, it's so bad. It's like it's like a theater play. The way they act and the costumes cool. and the hair, like you can see the wig lines. You can see like, no. the, oh. oh yeah, it's. But so you like bad. Wampies? You're a fan of Wampies, the live action Wampies. The because that one was a hit. People love that one. Fans of the original Wampies love the live action one. Wampies? You guys never heard of Wampies? <laughs> 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 End the episode. You guys, are, like, you guys didn't watch Wampies? Oh, Wampies? That's I'm what's picturing called. the big, the big things from Mario. The, the, <laughs> oh, the, those guys that fall yeah, down. Yeah, go, Wampies. Those Wampies. <laughs> I love Wampies, the musical. <laughs> you watch I've... that though? You liked Wampies? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Ugh. Let me look this up. Do you guys know what Wampies is? No, sometimes it's really, okay. like, if it's too early, sometimes it's hard. To, like, the lines get blurred of Steve's bits in reality. 
Mm-hmm. So where I'm it's just like, like still dreaming. Well, there's a lot of shit too that like you guys will bring up that I haven't even heard of, but you guys all know exactly this what one. it is. So I Wampies. thought this was one of those things. Wampies. Oh, you son of a bitch! Oh, Get out of here. You guys watch Wampies? <laughs> <laughs> so the Wampies was good. <laughs> Steve just brought up what well, says this Netflix series One Piece. Oh, it's oh I see. It's, it's two, two words. It's two words. Yeah. Okay. It's two words. I thought it was Wampies. God, God. So it was a bit, but it was also mixed with reality. <laughs> really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, you and Matt Robb call it Wompies. Yeah. Wompies. Yeah. Wompies. That's very funny. You guys watched uh, it? You watched Wompies? I fell asleep that one was last good. night. I fell asleep you... last night to uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Oh. Why? Because I was tired. Why? But I, could, <laughs> but I could tell it was a good movie, and I could see why Kevin Plackey loved it. it the shot composition is great, and it really is a... I'm going to go back and watch it, but it's, it's like a stirring... Like court drama that it is feels really real too. It feels like real. Way, yeah. I think you would enjoy it, Elliot. You should give it yeah. a shot. Cool. Yeah. Did you Which get to the dog? That? Did you get to the dog part? No, I felt okay. like so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back. That's the one oh, with yeah. the dog lawyer. I heard about this movie. Yeah, there's yeah. no rules lawyer. against a dog not being a lawyer. <laughs> That's true, and they did. It's a good one. This one's the, good. the movie is so good and so well crafted that you don't even remember the dog lawyer. No, like <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not seamless. the craziest part of the movie. <laughs> what is? Who's in that? Which one is that? Can you refresh? It's the French memories? film. French film, so you don't really know the. Okay, main so there's no one in it really that yeah. we know. You, you, okay, you don't know anybody. It's getting. I think it's. Uh, Oscar, it's Oscar nominated. nominated. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, but yeah, it's a well crafted movie from what I watched before I fell asleep. Uh, okay, and Kev- and and Elliot, what did you watch last night? I watched a three hour YouTube video of YouTubers responding to another video that I watched Friday night. <laughs> what? You know, what? I watched like an hour long video <laughs> uh, of these fundamentalist Christians. Christian influencers. Uh, that was like an hour and a half. And then Saturday, uh, Fundy Fridays uploaded a video um, where they responded, her and her husband responded to it. And for, and we watched all, we watched three hours of it and we were completely captivated. What is Fundy Fridays? Fundy Fridays is a really wonderful YouTube channel where Jen discusses um, <coughs> like Christian influencers or mega church pastors or things like that. She does oh, like deep wow. dives into these folks. Wow. But a lot of these influencers are like very silly people and they're doing collabs. And so it's very funny to watch them interact because uh, they'll argue about Christian stuff. Um and um like they'll oh, be like man. one of them is like okay with cussing now and it's a big deal and it's all part of the fundy snark uh community that um i got grace into the day after we got married and we've been in it ever since wow Damn. wait okay so I'm, I'm i'm perusing it right now so they are not like a commentary on those other channels in a non-christian way they are christians no, themselves no they are not i would oh, okay. say not at all yeah uh okay. she's a reverend technically but they make jokes about it they're trying to call out the sort of the hypocritical folks in that world um but the way they do it is so funny because these guys some of these guys are trying so hard to be famous that it's like a cringe watch and it's very addictive wow are these <clears throat> these are these are christians that are like trying to be TikTok famous or something or internet yeah famous yeah Basically, so they, they, like, they want to um, be Daily influencers. Wire. Yeah, and they're wow. trying really hard, and um, and so they'll do like twenty four hours with, and you just hear it's different. They're different stages of their journeys, and it is utterly fascinating. Are you wonder, recommended oh, yeah. these videos? Like when you're like, what makes you find these videos? Well, I follow them pretty much every up. You do that, yeah. Well, no, but <laughs> uh, Fundy Friday. It's like a guilty no, no, no. But yeah. how okay, do you okay, find the the like raw video like the original christian video. probably through the the friday thing right is that reddit. they recommend it to you and reddit and and um they say don't watch the videos so you don't give them money but i i don't mind i'm a little rebel <laughs> i'll give them a little their little ad <laughs> some money and do where you do you watch need to watch those though in if the they're doing deep do you even need to watch those if they do a deep dive on it I could have waited, but I was so darn excited, Steve. That's fine. That's fine. I get it. I get it. Like, I I went in Friday night, and I was like, babe, 
you know what time it is. <laughs> Paul and Morgan are with Bethany Beal. And Bethany Beal and her sister have been, they've gone viral multiple times because people like Trixie Mattel, the drag race. Uh, Love uh, Trixie star, Mattel. As well as Cody Ko did like a hit uh, a video about them and it got like 33 million views. So people know about these these folks and it's very uh, interesting to watch their story and it's like a guilty pleasure kind of like mm-hmm. a hate watch kind of thing it's a little cringy yeah a little, 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 little very cringy cringe. i love that i'm a big very fan cringe. of cringe content like I, I i i love it it's it's like the only way i can come kind of these days well and you yeah. know elliot's just like you know making sure that he is well educated and knows all of the people that are going to be in trump's future cabinet so i'm really glad that on you're the doing... show <laughs> Yeah, he's, Elliot likes to do research on people he brings on the show. It's like when you're a football fan and you see the new team coming up, and you're like, "Ah, this is, these are the recruits." Yep, yep. <laughs> I wonder who, who like, who inspired those? Uh, the Jesus, subject, Jesus, the su- Jesus, <laughs> yes. Jesus, Jesus. The subject of the deep dive. Those people who inspired them to want to be influencers. Are there other Christian influencers that make yeah, a lot yeah. of money? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Allie you Benz, know these Ducky. guys. Um, I don't think I know these guys. Joel. Joel. Joel, well, Joel Osteen? I know a few Joels. He's the biggest influencer. Um, Aside from Kenneth Jesus. Kenneth Copeland. Uh, wow, well. I guess they're just not on my radar. These guys are not on my radar <laughs> at all. Dude, Kenneth Copeland, you got to watch videos of that guy. He knows who Kenneth Vegas. Copeland is. I know, come on. Are you sure? You guys are you saying do. things to me I don't understand. He's look Satan. Up, Ken- You've seen look him. Look up Kenneth Copeland interview. Um, you guys are over here saying words I don't understand. You're saying one piece. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I looking up? Kenneth what? Kenneth Copeland. Interview. You'll remember him. You'll see Copeland. him. You'll see his face. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the demon guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy that's got exorcist eyes. Yes. <laughs> exorcist yeah, yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So Big you so exorcist but energy. But these aren't influencers. These are mega church. Technic, that's true. But there are well, like Ali Best, a lot of the right wing folks, the Matt Walshes, they're trying to be like, you know, the what's his name? Knowles, the other one from the Daily Wire. Um Okay, so but there, there. So it is what we think it is. It's just like Christ. It's Christian, like, uh, like fun, like uh, mm-hmm. you know, they like we're going, we're going to this uh, family fun camp thing, and we're gonna go look around. And they the do influencer with, stuff, but it's Christian leaning. And the thing with stuff? the real, yeah, the like this, they follow these people will follow their whole. There's a whole community of people that follow these people, and the Beals specifically, they are like. Their granddad was like a Nazi or whatever, and they have like photos of them next to the, no- <laughs> the no, Nazi no, baby. No, and like, dude. <laughs> like smiling, like, this is our grandpa. This actually, wow. actually, I might look into this because I actually. It's addictive. I, it's I addictive. might, I, yeah. I, so I, I might get it. Right. Jesus get, Christ. I might Kevin. get a kick at it. Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> I figured you'd be. Come on. 13, I knew you 30. wouldn't leave that. I knew you wouldn't leave that in. <laughs> this is just for the boys to have a quick yeah, chuckle. It's thirteen like thirty. <laughs> but yeah, okay, I get it. That that's cool, and I do get the guilty pleasure of being like, oh man, it's like watching reality TV and in a way. It's yeah. and you're also seeing like some of the cracks starting to show in these people's ideologies, and it's fascinating to see. Right, that's that, like, cool nuggets of growth where you're like oh you're actually almost there like you're getting to where you you can be a fully formed human and then the others are like still in npc mode where they just regurgitate <laughs> you know right-wing authoritarian talking points also joe's been sending us little sweet blessings every, every oh night man where are you like... finding that shit? Yeah. <laughs> i was telling you guys like, yeah. i was just i was just you know I, i'm not really on my instagram or my tiktok that often but i was like you know how you open them now it's almost always going to short form shit on every right. platform so i start going and there's just i think it feeds me this thing that instagram is is categorizing as comedy slash christian content and I got the yes. comedy feed side of it. And, was, and, and I think the, the I got the ironic side of it. Like a yeah. lot of people think it's comedy because it's funny. And it's this guy clapping and singing a God song. It's very funny. So I send it to you guys. I say, bless us. Happy Friday. And then that it, guy's not trying to be funny, though. No, no. he's no. That's what I'm saying is that I the world is making it comedy, but it's Christian content. Does that guy understand? So now what? I'm getting fed so much 
unironic Christian comedy. <laughs> mm. It's the best. And I had to stop myself from it's great, like, right? sending it to you guys. It's great because they're so oblivious to what they're doing. I just got one that they were doing the electric slide, but they were doing it with Bible verses. It was uh, amazing. Oh, wow. Yes. Dude, oh. dude, this is what if oh, wow. this is how we become radicalized, first of mm -hmm. all. And it's second dark. of all, because it's going to start getting every, once you look into it, Steve, you were, you're going to be like, this is going to be a rabbit hole. I'm not going to come out. For I think, really though, like you guys shared that one video of the like, um, like the hug. It was like a hug or something. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. The hug. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was that like that's love part of that. that. That's or part love. of that. Yeah. Do you remember what that was? No, that was the hug shake. That wasn't Christian content. That was that just pure quite... love. That was just pure yeah, love. But there was, was that. But, but that couple love. that did it felt. I got big they Christian vibes Christian. from them. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't the main thesis of the video. Um, but you can tell. But that's the same world, right? Like that's it's because it's like, I guess what I'm thinking of is it's like it's friendly content that's non-threatening. You could show it to your kids. You could show it to your grandma, and it won't offend them. And it's all kind of like in that same world of like, we're trying not to make like gross or profane stuff. We're making friendly, like big white smiles, yeah. wine glass kind of stuff. Live, well, love, uh, laugh stuff. Look, exactly. Yeah. That's See, it's all in that same umbrella, right? Like you think that hug video is in the li live, laugh, love kind of category. I, I think that's different than the category that we started talking about, which is just uber christian influencer content but it's if like you, the gateway to that right if you do like, a quick google steve the answer is yes there are yeah. like i'm looking at the, the google uh top to the, what they're giving me there's top 45 christian instagram influencers top 70 bible wow. influencers wait for it top 989 christian influencers from this so, so hell? okay so i guess what i'm asking is is like Cause I guess I don't really remember when we were building source fed and shit. And then we would go to like VidCon or something. Like, I don't really remember there being like overtly Christian influencers. Was that something that existed then? Well, that was like, where did internet. it start? I mean, it's always been around, but they're not going to VidCon. They're going to a different mm. one. Mm. Yeah. But they had they were around when we were building SourceFed. Yeah, of course they were. Like influencers, these types of influencers. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I guess they just, they just were not on my radar. It's because you're a heathen and you're going to enjoy the yeah. fires of hell. <laughs> hell is <laughs> unbeknownst Stitter. to a lot, Christianity does outdate SourceFed by a couple. Well, of yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely. Um, but I'm talking about like influencers, like people that are sent stuff and they make content and it's all very but that, cookie cutter. But that was very, that was such a small thing when you guys were building SourceFed. But that's anyway. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, where did it start? Where did like the Christian influencer start? Like, I'm not talking about like the mega church guys, but I, the TV show guys. I'm talking about like the YouTube like social media. I feel like you could say that about any like subgenre. Like where did the mukbang influencers start? Like Well, I could just say was... I what? guess I... mukbang? Mukbang is what I <laughs> That's call it. That's a good it. question, but I think you could find that. Like I don't know if there were mukbang influencers when this when is... SourceFed was around. Anthropologists for years will be I think nailing down the exact <laughs> I know, right? There'll be some carbon date. Uh, They're like we found a box full of uh Funko Pops and uh and old candy and it looks like we can carbon date this to around 2013. <laughs> uh this uh top comment on this video Joe of this guy that you yep. sent. Yep. Where she just says, "Do you do funerals?" is very funny. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> the guy that's doing the yeah, the guy that's on his. So he doesn't know that people are. Or he, what's going on, Joe? Does I he know? I, he, I have, yeah. I, have, I don't deep dive far enough into it because I, I get that secondhand embarrassment so hard that yeah, I, that's, I can't. Oh, that's I the cringe I'm talking about. That's, see, that's <laughs> okay. So that's the cringe I'm talking about. Like the cringe that I like <laughs> love is like uncomfortable moment. Like yeah. creating an uncomfortable moment 
with the which intent, is what that video is. But but, because, but with the but with the intent of making people uncomfortable. No, he's trying oh, to help. No. That's the kind of cringe I like, where it's cre it's like a crafted cringe. You like Eric I, Andre? This guy is not Eric yes, Andre. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. This, it's, and it's not Larry David. It's like a different kind of cringe. This is like a lacking self awareness. Yes, cringe. and I, I do like, like that. that cringe. I do like it because I like the cringe accounts that have like. Like today I saw one where someone was like rapping about, it was on my Instagram and I wanted to share it with everybody, but it's one of those cringe accounts that like it limits who can follow, like you need to follow them in order to uh, share them, you know? Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's so good. But it was like this video of this girl, this person singing, like rapping, but then they did like the high pitch sound to sing, like in the middle of like a <laughs> rap. And I was like, whoa, this is a not self-aware cringe that I like. But I think that the thing that Joe sent is like, that's a cr the cringe I feel from that comes from the fact that there are more people that watch that and are inspired and find that to be like a wonderful piece of content and find zero humor in it. That like the fact that there's so many people that don't find that funny is where my cringe comes from yeah, on those I'm, videos. It's I'm two surprised different that's worlds what makes slamming you together. Oh, go ahead. I'm surprised that makes you cringe. It makes so, me cringe like because it, I'm like, Ugh. you know, because I, I want to laugh at it and laugh and it is funny because it's, it's like, like not hurting anyone and it's genuinely making people feel inspired. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like that inspired feeling is like, so why, why is that? Are, why are you being, I get what you're saying. Because it's like, how are you being inspired by that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah like and i guess it's like look let people find inspiration stop wherever being, stop being an inspiration gatekeeper stop gatekeeping inspiration <laughs> <laughs> anyone can be inspired by anything i guess but that's where i feel kind of cringed out because i, I totally get it. Laugh at it yeah that's where i get i don't know maybe there's a different word for it it's not cringe it's the, a, look the oh, amount man. of content that this guy makes joe that's one that's <laughs> another fun one when you scroll and it's yeah. page after page after page of no view videos this is still going well yeah. you know what that is i found those are kind of a recent thing that's like a TikTok thing i think because on TikTok they do that oh, thing okay. where it's they have a gimmick and then they go like send me a thing and i'll set i'll do a, the gimmick at your friend and I'll say your friend's name and then I'll do the gimmick yeah. with your friend's name in it. Yeah. And that's why you find pages and pages of content because each one is like a, per it's like a cameo. Almost. It's half, it's half gimmick, half problem with today's internet and, and fame culture, right? Like that guy probably would have stopped a long time ago. Let's say he would have stopped halfway through, but he had that one blow up. It has 1.5 million views. 700,000 of them are very ironic views, and he doesn't realize it because <laughs> he's not self-aware. And now he'll never stop. Stop. Now he'll never stop. And isn't there a theory out there that, like, that's what TikTok does? Is, like, it gives you the one that will hit, and they oh, send that, that one does? out to yep, by so design. that keeps yeah, you but on you it. Know, yeah. The thing with, like, the never stop thing is true for sure. But I think like, and you've seen this too, like I know you guys have seen this where people like their gimmick runs out, their bit runs out and people aren't like the views are real low now, even when they do like they go back to basics and do what made them work in the first place. And then they get that, and welcome like, to source fed 20 <laughs> minutes or less. <laughs> and then they get that thing where they're like, oh shit, I'm depressed because this algorithm gave me dopamine for this amount of time and this audience send me sent me love and now i'm in this like depression spiral because it doesn't i don't get that dopamine anymore uh that's scary that's fucked up it's creating all these sad people <laughs> you're gonna you fine there's concessions <laughs> at the dodger no. stadium that need <laughs> I still don't know how you found the video, Joe. Showed up. Yeah, how did it showed up? So, well, but you know what? But Joe's job kind of almost dick. It's look, helpful to look to have your algorithm be I, not very pointed, right? I'm not going to question. 
how blessings have come into my life. <laughs> You're not but meant I will, to question it. I'm not meant to question. And as they say, Jesus will provide you what you need when you need it. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. We're Beretta. losing Joe. I'm we're not lo- meant to question. <laughs> Who am I to question the joy I am receiving in my life? But if I am to say one thing about it, it it would be this. I am (laughs) really... Can't even hear it. That's the best part of it. (laughs) Okay, can I tell you guys what I watched? Yes. Tenet. I did. Mm -hmm. I watched Tenet. No way. I did. Did you see it in IMAX? Well... I, or you so watch it at I, home. So Tenet, it, did we know? Did we talk about how Tenet is back in IMAX last time we talked? No, about it just we randomly showed up Tenet. like that. Okay, so literally, I sent Kevin a text like a couple days ago. I was like, "Dude, Tenet is back in theaters like for a week by popular demand." By popular demand. By our podcast. And I was like, um, <laughs> "That's a fun thing. Maybe we should make a piece of content out of that and go see it." And I was like, but you know what? I kind of just, now I'm like, I, okay, so I just saw Oppenheimer like a few weeks ago in IMAX. And I truly was uncomfortable in that movie theater after about two and a half hours. And I was like, do I really want to sit in the theater for another two and a Wait, half hours? Wait, why? Uh, because, you know, you get to a point where you guys don't get that feeling of fatigue for sitting in a seat for almost three hours. Totally. Especially a movie theater seat. Oh, I thought you were going to say just because you were on the side of the opposing side of the war. <laughs> I was uncomfortable because, yeah, I want I want I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose again. I don't want to lose again. I don't want to. <laughs> it's just really it's triggering, you know. Uh, but no, it's just uncomfortable to sit in a theater okay. seat. That's not comfortable for three hours. Um, and so I'm like, man, I think I'm just like done with three hour movies in the movie theater. And I was like, but with Tenet, it's like, man, they got those big IMAX shots and stuff. And like, maybe it would be worth to go see. But no, I decided against it. And I watched Tenet. This was my second time watching it ever Are you by yourself. I was by myself. Oh, concentrated. I watched it from start to finish. Completely concentrated. <laughs> no distractions, no phones, <clears throat> nothing. Hey, we are living in the moment. Going. Where's it going? I really enjoyed it. Oh, oh man. I thought you were going to say really... I still don't fucking <laughs> no. understand it. I really enjoyed it, and then I and I finally get it. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> but you know what? I it might... go backward and go forward. It go backward <laughs> and go forward is what it is. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a this is this um... is a Christopher Nolan time travel movie. Mm. But it's done in a way that's like, what if what if we looked at time travel this way, not the way that we've been looking at it in movies? And um, and I was really entertained by it. But but my final thoughts are it is a very well made movie and it is very good, but it is it it is it's asking for almost an impossible. It's an impossible ask to be like watch this movie with zero distractions yeah I and feel that. then you'll enjoy it and i thought about that for a second and i was like okay so i feel two ways about it i feel like how dare you make a movie where you cannot look away for one second you have to listen to every fucking word and soak it in yeah nolan that's called a book <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and on the other hand i was like but nolan has made like incredible movies up until that point and they're all pretty good and amazing movies. And some of them demand more of your attention than others. But he has earned, I think by the time you get to Tenet, he earned. Yeah, let him the, do that. The, yeah, the ability to be like, you know what? This one needs a little more attention than the other ones. And also, I remember I went on a deep dive on like Easter egg and like theories about that movie afterwards and it made me love it so much more because there's so oh, it's one of those things where it's like hundreds of hidden details little hidden that things, like make yeah. you understand it more yeah did you see the moment where doc brown was in the background yeah what yeah mm-hmm. you see him yeah 
they go far back enough that you they see went, they went back see way back see and then they went way forward z yeah. to get back on track well great now i gotta watch it a third time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i really i really yeah. enjoyed it i really enjoyed it good yeah and a lot of people are like you know there's a lot of opinion that that's like his best movie which is like kind of bonkers i think because it is very no. good but i don't think it's his best no Mm-mm. i'm a big fan of the prestige prestige yeah. dude and it's his first one no it's no not. god no. memento Oh, Memento, that's right. And there was one I don't watch Memento, Memento and, too. and The Awakening. I don't watch Memento. Why? No, wait. It's got that, it's the same reason why I don't watch Pi, and I don't watch a lot of those, like, early kind of indie, <laughs> like, <laughs> here's a film school student idea. Because I because it is. It just feels like, oh, well, this is like a film school student idea. And then it's like Damn. a film school project. Damn. Burn it. I mean, whatever, dude. It it technically was. I I you called it the awakening. That, the... that was so stupid. It's fucking insomnia. Jesus Christ. Oh, insomnia. 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 Yeah. You didn't seen that, right? Oop, farted. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, little little poot. Hey, we'll, we'll be right back. We'll, be right back. <laughs> we'll have to clean that up. <laughs> we'll have to clean that up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Did you well, notice that the that tenet is the spelled the same way? Oh, the that's fun. Time. That's fun. I actually yeah. didn't never thought about that. I truly yeah. did not think about that. It's kind of yeah. That's why I said there was a thread I was reading where someone said, um, "What are they? What, a palindrome? They're like love a palindrome," and I'm like, "What the fuck? Where's the palindrome?" Mm-hmm. And it's a word that what? obviously literally should be the title. The I never yeah. thought about that. I literally Brad. never thought about it. Yeah, you didn't give it, a shit about this movie before in the, um, when you watched. I, I, no one told me it was a fucking, <laughs> fucking. When I grow. upload the podcasts, I put little messages at the bottom of the uh, description uh, that usually has something to do with the content of the episode. Yeah, I see it every time. Like, Thank mm-hmm. you, Kevin. Uh, I did one for Tenet where I just found a, a text reverser and I put the description that I put at top. <laughs> that's I fun. reversed it at the that's bottom. That's fun. Yeah. It's just that's the kind of high quality layered content you get here at the Valley Folk. Yeah. You know what? Can I say, can I say something since I did say overall I enjoyed it, but now I have to say some things I didn't like? Definitely. I don't love that the that they call the main character protagonist. Oh, yeah. And that's like his name. Yeah, he don't I don't think that's as cool as he thinks it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> I, think you're, I think that, Steve, is an absolutely correct uh, note. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> but that was kind of it. That kind of bothered me a little bit. And then called the other, the bad guys, the antagonists. And I was like, is that just because everything else is so confusing that they got to at least give something really easy <laughs> don't remember for the, the audience? Name. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, protagonist, good, antagonist, bad. Okay, got it. <laughs> You know they I were mean, just writing the script, and then like they had yeah. that just there, and they're like, you know, <laughs> yeah, we should, we, we should yeah, just leave it. Placeholder, just leave it, man. Like he gave it to his brother to read the first draft, and he's like, oh, you haven't given him a name yet, huh? And he's like, I think it's kind of cool. Call him protagonist. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no further thought. <laughs> he's like, oh, all right. Um, do, have you guys? Did you have you picked up on, or has it gotten into your algorithms the constant like barrage of Christopher Nolan tidbit information that no one's asking for? Yeah, is, it, isn't it weird? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah I'm getting just, that. Like, I think it's like he he like whenever he's gonna make a movie, you never hear a fucking peep out of him. But as soon as he's done with a movie, he won't shut like, the blah, fuck blah, up. Blah, blah, blah. Like get back to work. Yeah, <laughs> stop talking about <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> the more movies before you're too old. Did you guys hear that uh, Tarantino's trying to get Tom Cruise in his movie? He's not the only oh. one. I know. Uh, what was the Who other else? guy's name? Uh, Paul the, Thomas the, Anderson and the director of uh, the director uh, of the Revenant. What the hell's his name? Oh, oh. Anto- or uh, Alfonso Cuarón. Alfonso yeah. Cuarón is that Cuarón? No. Hold on. It- I think it is. Right. Please, Elliot. Yeah, Alejandro Gonzalez Inratu. Oh, Alejandro Inratu. Mm. Honestly, too many unpronounced, not pronounceable yeah, director names. Tom Cruise is about to. 
Tom Cruise is about to go on a tear, and I am down for it. Yeah, he he like recently said that he's like done making like you know um, big popcorn blockbuster movies, and he's ready to go back to doing more auteur stuff. Hell like, yeah! Like when he worked with Paul Thomas Anderson on Magnolia back in the day. Didn't and, Jack uh, Black just say also he wants to see him like back at Tropic Thunder too? Yeah, that's one. funny. I have heard rumblings that everyone's interested in a, in another one of those. And it wasn't Tom Cruise with Paul Thomas Anderson. It's Leonardo DiCaprio is shooting with Paul Thomas Anderson right now. I thought uh-huh. Tom Cruise is also in that. Is he? Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know. But Regina you're right. Hall they, is. Yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson is shooting a new one right now, and that's and it, with with Leonardo DiCaprio, which sounds fucking crazy. Did you guys see the trailer for Civil War? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. I don't, okay, I don't want to so watch it. I'm scared of that movie. I don't want to watch it because I like Alex Garland. It's Alex Garland. Mm-hmm. I really like Alex Garland. Me I like too. Ex Machina. I like uh, Annihilation. Annihilation. I liked Annihilation a lot. I love Devs. Devs. Mm-hmm. Which, if you guys have not seen, I highly recommend. And Is that then, with, um, uh, who's in Devs? Nick Offerman. Yeah, I didn't. That didn't grab me. That's, how long? But, how many episodes did you watch? I got like two or three in. Damn. I tried sticking with it, but it it did not grab me as much. But that's okay. That's yeah. There's the a there's a moment. Well, there's a turning point in that show where you're like, oh man, that's really fucking cool. Oh, cool. What about Civil War? Makes you not want to go see it? Is it just the... No, I want to see it. I just don't want to see the trailer because I want to go in blind on that one because I saw Men was the last one he did. Did you guys see that one? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch it. That was a bizarre... That was bizarre. I mean, I liked it, but it was bizarre. It was like not... It didn't feel like an Alex Garland movie. I think you're fine not watching the trailer. You can imagine yeah. what it is, and it doesn't really show you anything, so you could I've, watch it, but it's... Yeah. yeah. I've I, heard would good contend that, I would contend the trailer makes you think it's a little bit more low budgety than it you want it to feel. Dude, but guess what? I just read that it's A24's most expensive mm-hmm. movie, I think. Oh, it's them trying to branch into a big... Yeah. Big budget. But Which yeah, I, I wonder if that's the, by design, Joe. Like, they're trying to... Maybe. Like, wow you when you actually see it dude i'm like so scared of that movie coming out in theaters and just everywhere like Mm -hmm. with what the you're afraid of the reaction (sighs) yeah you think that it it will it'll motivate people in a bad way Mm -hmm. i mean people like theaters i don't know it just scares me Oh, that's, that's an excellent point, and that's a dark thing to say, Kevin. But it's not; it's a real thing. That's like you're that's thinking like that the those first thing I targeted. saw. Yeah, that's like the first thing I thought when I saw the trailer for it, which is awful. Well, did you see that movie that was like it was like a uh, Damon Lindelof kind of thing, and it was like Republicans were hunting liberals or something? Yeah, what? That? yeah. It was called The Hunt. The Hunt, yeah. Really? That movie felt like it was like, it, it, I don't know. I don't know much about this Civil War movie, but I have an idea that it's similar in tone. Is yeah, that we'll not an incorrect connection? But, but, way, but way bigger. <laughs> okay. But not- yeah, did you see that movie, The Hunt? I did, yeah. I thought it was okay. It was fine. It was fine. It just, it just came out at a time where people were like, again, everybody's so divisive right now that yeah. you, if you make a movie like that, there's going to be some very uh, hardcore opinions about it. Yeah. I saw one review and this guy was like, <laughs> I, it's "You gotta get closer to the mic, Joe." <laughs> the silence. Uh, I, think, I think Zoom is like uh, noise canceling. Like it. It's it's noise canceling yeah. it out. Yeah, I, I no ham-boned. religious. Yeah, I ham Can you, Kevin? Can you just find an audio clip? Like, just put the audio clip of the same I'll just put video. That guy, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, um, well, speaking of movies, one last thing: Have you guys heard of the Super DVD? What? No, sir. Have, have you heard of the Super DVD? I will just read straight from the article. Are you ready? Yes. Ooh. Scientists have created a DVD, a singular DVD, <laughs> that could hold up to hold up oh. for. Get ready, a hundred and twenty-five thousand gigabytes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Also known as a petabit. Just so you know, a regular DVD is 4.5 gigabytes of data. Right. But a Blu-ray, but blue, what about Blu-rays? You can hold. <laughs> I just started working on this. 
just banking on DVDs not going away. It's yeah, just, <laughs> like, like what? But committed science, dude. This is this is gonna like now's it, the time though. Super super archival uh, for this this type of science. But you could put up to two hundred and fifty thousand movies on okay, a singular but... DVD. Yeah, and, have, and then take your whole collection, put it on a singular DVD. Everything that you ever wanted, a a, a movie studio could offer their entire library and be like, this is a $10,000 DVD. This is a $40,000 DVD. You get every movie the studio has ever made. Wait, how many movies did you say it could fit? 250,000. Like, that's <laughs> way beyond. What, yeah. Like 100 movies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. How many movies could that fit <laughs> on, on it, dude? Are you like, like, asking how many there movies like are there? Movies? <laughs> Let's ask chat GPT. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> First of all, I okay. Now not to not to poo poo a little bit on this announcement Here because we go. you know, whatever. Technology is always advancing. You can on it. Please, the poo-poo. only poo poo I have Poo poo DVD. Is poo poo DVD. <laughs> <laughs> so when Blu-ray was coming out, they were like uh, a a Blu-ray disc could hold 128 128 gigabytes mm-hmm. of of data and people were like whoa they i could put like entire i could put all my fo- family photos and like my birth scan birth certificates of all my family or whatever and have all this shit archived or whatever but it like almost didn't it's like it didn't matter like nobody cared that a blu-ray disc could hold as much as it did mm-hmm. because blu-ray writers like writing onto a blu-ray disc didn't become like a popular thing like on a like on a pc remember when sure. we used to be able to burn dvds yeah. and stuff like that so it's like already from the consumer standpoint it's like all right so you can you can you have a disc that can hold like so much shit that's cool but from a consumer standpoint, it's like, whatever. But if studios did that thing you were just saying, Joe, where they're like entire movie library collection on Blu-ray, that's like a really exciting idea. For yeah. Sure. So there's like a world where like the, the article talks about how the carbon footprint could be like incredibly lessened because you're not doing DVDs singular, yada, 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 yada. But it's more ar- archival. Yes for sure but there is a world where there's so much shit online right like imagine if you could take your whole plex or everything that you've ever <laughs> yeah. because everybody's really worried about the fact that because with streaming nothing is permanent we you think it is but it's not the movie studios and streaming services are putting stuff on taking it off constantly and <laughs> and physical media is making a comeback because of it now imagine you just like you got your one fucking dvd yeah oh. And you have Dude, everything you ever wanted on it. Let's do like a parody of the um the Pure Moods CDs commercials and do like now for the first time you can own the Jurassic internet. Park. No, the Rah! internet. <laughs> the internet. We every month you'll get a new alphabet letter of the internet and it'll be like <laughs> everything that starts with A is on this disc from the I just want to I want the P one. <laughs> the one that starts with P. Well, hold on. You got to order the discs. And by, when Porn. P comes out, you'll be the first one to get it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> like, and it's like, it just archives the whole internet onto a disc in case the electricity goes out. According to IMDb, there are approximately, and this goes way back, 500,000 movies. This, this can't even hold half the movies. This piece of shit DVD can't even hold but, half the movies. Hey, Two scientists, DVDs get back to hold. work. Yeah. <laughs> Two DVDs, and you're done. Two DVDs. Two super DVDs. But that's not that's not counting all the television series, right? True. Yeah. There we go. Just so movies. if I can, okay, okay, from coming speaking from like a nerdy uh, collector point of view. Because, I mean, you know. Steve, think of how much of your porn you could put on that. I did. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. All of my porn is mm-hmm. on the internet. Right. Right but now. If I could get, but if I could get it off the internet. And onto the Super DVD. Now we're on to something, mm. boys. Mm. And I'm seeing dollar signs. <laughs> 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 but I guess, like, from a collector's standpoint, remember when Blu-ray or when DVD burners came out? 
and your friends were like, I got rid of my DVD collection. And now I've got this like binder full of like loose discs and it's all my collection. You turn the page there's all these blank discs with like a Sharpie, mm-hmm. the, <laughs> the departed, you know, jaws. And you're like, I got all my movies here now. And I'm like, okay, cool. I guess that's cool. Whatever. But if I had a DVD shelf <laughs> that had like two discs on it Boring. on the shelf and everything else has, you know, maybe there's toys and books on that shelf. In addition well, to those two, you DVDs, make, you're making space for some toys and books. I'm making space for toys and books. Does that? And can I put, maybe I can fit 4k versions of my meager collection. Nowhere near 500,000. And then I could have high quality versions of all my movies. I don't need the internet, Joe. There you go. No more internet. Oh. No more internet. And I'm sure. Interesting. Th- I wonder. I don't know how the science beto- behind game printing goes, but I wonder if you could also do a thing where you put like games thousands and thousands and thousands of games yeah because there's this kind of collective like a feeling of we don't know if companies are going to pull the rug out from under us and then we don't have these movies or these games anymore and then when new game consoles come out it's like are the old games compatible with the new system is always like the first question a lot of these nerds ask and so interesting interesting in case you guys were wondering uh how they do it they uh they say we increase the capacity care. of optical data storage to the care. petabit level by extending the planar I recording architecture to three dimensions and hundreds of layers meanwhile breaking the optical <laughs> diffraction <laughs> limit barrier of the recorded spots i'm okay. interested i liked it <laughs> I I don't think... hang on let me take some notes uh, okay. <laughs> i got some notes to take I like it. I think I honestly look, you know, cool. Good on you, scientists. That's probably a technology we'll never really use. I don't. Yeah, I don't see that making it out to the to the market. It could be like companies that archive their like that I that's see. that's what their archives are. They're like just these discs with like gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs mm-hmm. of data. Mm-hmm. I can Maybe. see like a couple getting into a very big argument and she's like, I've had it up to here. And rather than like throwing plates, she's like, dude, one single oh, break and you yeah. lose it all. And you guys want to hear court and they have to Ooh. tally up how much money that would be for each movie. Ooh. Oh, we'll see. OK, so that's that's a good point, because did you know, I don't know if you guys knew this, but Disney is putting out or has already put out or announced they were putting out like a collection of like all of their movies. Did you hear about this? Yeah. It's going to be real expensive too. Yeah. And it's so expensive. It's like $2,000 or something like 1500 bucks. And it's just like gorgeous, like, you know, box set and like, everything's all beautiful. The whole presentation is gorgeous, but it's like, God damn, that's how much I got. And they're all on their own discs. They can put it on one disc. What is that, like 80 <laughs> discs for fucking $2,000? Wait, no. so it's like every animated, like... <laughs> it's like, hang on, let me find out. Disney, it's like, it's like the, it's like the 500, hang on, Disney complete... Disney big disc. Disney big lots disc. Disney big fat cock. Let me type that into Google and see what happens. Oh, that was the working title for Princess and the Frog. <laughs> yeah. I was already laughing because no matter what the, no matter <laughs> the title what he the chose, response, yeah. no matter what title he chose, that was very funny. Okay, so I'm seeing you can get it right now with free delivery from Walmart for fourteen ninety nine. That's uh, one thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars. How many movies it got? Uh, it has one hundred movies. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's not as one, many as I hoped. One hundred movies. I mean, fuck, that's a hundred movies. Let me see here. Let me do the math here. You don't think that you don't think that that's enough. You don't think that's enough movies. I mean, that's fifteen bucks a movie. I guess that's it's, okay. 
Yeah, and it starts with their first one. It's Snow White, and then it goes Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and then it goes all the if way. If you do the whole oh. list, you're a failure. Interesting um, no. <laughs> absence of Song of the South. Uh, that is interesting, isn't it? Let's dig into this. Yeah. And it ends with Elemental. That's the last one they have in there. I'll throw that out and take a couple bucks off. What do you say? Listen to these <laughs> throw out Dude, you're going to throw out a lot of them. You ready? Let's t- let's pick the ones we're going to throw out here. Elemental, trash, strange world, trash, light year, trash, turning red. Eh, people love, people love turning red. Stay. It wasn't it for stay. you, but kids love it. I know. That's why I'm like halted on it. Encanto, Encanto. People love it. Same Luca. I'd keep Luca. I like that. Yeah. Ryan the Last Dragon. Trash. trash. Soul, I liked it. Onward. Trash. Frozen 2. Trash. Toy Story 4. Trash. You know, Frozen 2 was trash? Really? <laughs> yes. I thought wow. the first one was better. For sure. I actually like Frozen 2 more. But you like 2 more. Interesting. You have to keep Frozen 2 in the package now. Bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah, bring it All back. All right. Back. Back uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Trash. Mm. Incredibles 2, trash. <laughs> trash. Coco, we're keeping. Cars yeah. 3, trash. Trash. Oh, it's, trash. It's just no, Final Story, can stay. trash. Zootopia, trash. Good Dinosaur, no. trash. Zootopia is not trash. Zootopia is really out, good. Keep. Big Hero 6, keep. Planes, fire and rescue, trash. <laughs> what the fuck? Frozen, keep. Planes, trash. Monsters University, trash. Reggae Ralph, keep. Frank and Weenie, trash. Brave, trash. Winnie the Pooh, trash. Cars 2, trash. Tangled, trash. No, 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 no. Princess of the Frog. (laughs) Disney's Big Fat Cock, trash. Big trash. (laughs) Steve, will you please, will you please... Do do this bit. Do yeah, this on bit. a TikTok. But do it on a TikTok or an Easter egg. Our player does these things where he'll do like uh like smash or pass seven thousand Pokemon in one video. And it's just that bit and it's uh, so funny. It do just what keeps... you, do what you just did. That'd be so great. Uh, people are gonna be like, What? That's the point. The comment section is gonna be so fucking controversial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, Tangled's not bad. I like Tangled. Oh, you amazing. said a lot of good ones in there. I know. No, I didn't. What, Cars 2? No, Zootopia. Zootopia is, is really good. It's good. <laughs> is Zootopia going to stand the test of time, yes. friends? Yes. No, they it's just not. They made a whole land of it in like. Listen, uh, yeah, in Shanghai, China, Japan, or whatever. They're what Shanghai, Shanghai, China, Japan. It means it did well over there. And over here, it's just like, no one gets <clears throat> where's it. Where's the land at Disneyland? People right. love it. People love that movie. There's a porn land of Oh, yeah. You know who loves those movies? The guys that have the thin blue line on the back of their car. <laughs> Ambulances? <What>? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> You're right. Ratatouille, trash. Wally, trash. No! Me the is trash. <laughs> Guys, I just read a really interesting uh, thing here that says, <laughs> I don't know how true this is. Uh, <laughs> just start trashing like cl- classic movies. Incredible. Uh, Lion trash. King, trash. Lilo <laughs> Stitch, trash. Brother Bear, love it. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, Brother Bear, two copies. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm looking at an interesting approach uh, from a company here guys in japan a company gives uh there is a company in japan that gives employees who don't smoke ooh, an extra six vacation days every year to make up for the cigarette breaks which kind of makes sense and that sense and that's nice and then it says the company found the new policy gave a lot of employees the push to finally quit smoking what do you think about that i like that that be an incentive? That's like humans are so. Somebody in, in America impressionable. Would be suing, they'd be suing right away. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, probably. You're right Fun. because the smoker would be like, "Why? Why?" Yeah. yeah. Fun fact about um, Japan as well, according to a survey conducted in 2019, almost 18 percent of Japanese adults are smokers, were smokers at that time. So it's far less, I believe, in America. Yeah, in 2022, the average smoking prevalence in Japan was 23%. Uh, that's What's 29% America's? of men and 8.7% of women. Um, yeah, what America, is it in America? Because I feel like I don't see it. No, it's we, we really yeah. have to. Oh, oh I uh, see it. 11.5% um, is what we're at. 
Glendale, wow. Armenians, lots of cigarettes. Right, let's go ahead and just edit that out too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because if you think about those things, like I always think about like what are things that we that casually happen in our society that one day will be looked at as something that was ridiculous, right? And something that was like, wow, I can't believe we did that. And uh, maybe smoking is one of those things in general. Who knows? Maybe nicotine smoke might be one of those things. But a lot of people, I mean, I don't know. Did you guys ever work in like an office that wasn't like, um, it was just like kind of a boring corporate kind of like drag? Grace and I were talking about that the other day. Like I have a fantasy of working like the most boring office job in the world (laughs) just because I would love to know what it's like to like really have to like trudge through that monotony day in and day out but also like have the stability of like showing up clocking in do like typing at the computer as long as it's not like super stressful water cooler you just have like yeah a task list yeah but i did notice because someone here was talking about like in the in the office setting there you notice that like there are people who take smoke breaks like a lot Mm mm-hmm and you wouldn't really notice that in another industry, I guess, or I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just talking out of my ass, but no, you you'd notice it on in in labor jobs as well. Yeah, um, I guess that's but... true. Yeah, labor jobs where you're expected to kind of just like do your job and put in your hours, and and you know it's not really that fun. It's just a job, you know. And it just feels like a lot of these comments here on this post are saying that, like, it used to, like, drive me nuts that, like, every hour there'd be, like, this whole group of people that would go, like, time for a smoke break. And then, like, they'd leave and wouldn't come back for, like, 30 minutes. And then they're all laughing and, like, ah, <laughs> like, they went outside and had, like, a great time. And then they come in and then they do their work or whatever. And then, like, an hour later they do it again. And it's like, if I went out and someone caught me not, like, just kind of hanging out somewhere and laughing, and I wasn't smoking or whatever in a corporate environment, they'd probably be like, hey, get back to your desk. What are you doing? But it it almost feels like it's like a secret, like, get away from your desk kind of like, and no one will question it. Act. Smoking. Does it feel like that's something that someday people will be like, I can't believe that you know we think, couldn't just do that and we weren't smokers oh oh i think that time is long gone you think so yeah but yeah. i do think that that's like the last thing that we would think about when it comes to smoking retroactively right. my mom was a huge smoker when i was growing up and i was and i was up in montana which was actually one of the first states that did pass a you can't smoke in restaurants mm. um ban which i was really surprised about and it was, i was in college i think when that happened so this is all still pretty recent in the last like 20 years, right? That the 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 switch has yeah. happened with smoking culture. Yeah. I grew up, my mom was smoking in the house. If we were in the car, like all cars came with ashtrays. They don't yeah. come with ashtrays anymore. Mm-mm. And and those little like uh lighters mm. that you yep. push in, they don't come with those really anymore. Um so I was surrounded by it. We'd be in those small spaces, people were smoking at restaurants, people were smoking yeah. inside buildings, like it was Airplanes. <laughs> everywhere. All the time. <clears throat> and you're right. And now it is like one of those things. We used to be things. a country. We used to be a real country. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of these, these things that you kind of get shamed for now. It was like, ew, you smoke? That's gross. Have you seen like, that video that like circles back every few months, but it's from like, I don't know if it's the 80s or late 70s when they start banning uh, drinking and driving and all the people are like, they're so what are you pissed talking? off. What is this? I mean, it's like, no, nah, you can't have a couple of drinks. Go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I thought this was America. Dude, some of those videos go a step further. Like, it's not even about the drinking. It's about the actual buckling up. Oh, oh you're yeah, going to make yeah. me buckle up in a car? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Dude. Oh, you yeah, want it for my insane. own safety? Fuck you. Dude. Yep. It's always but I guess bad. it's one of those things where it's like, because smokers, if you're a smoker and that's your thing, you know, you want, you know, you're going to go out and smoke if you're working all day, eight hours or whatever. Like, you're going to go out and smoke and you don't want anything about that to change. Like, you want to be able to go out and smoke and not be shamed for it or in trouble for it or whatever. So if and I and I think you kind of have to like uh, allow that because it's almost like 
there's an understanding of the psychological ramifications of being like a smoker and it's understood that it's like okay this is something you're doing to de-stress or maybe it's an addiction or who knows but it's none of our business and from a business perspective it's like you can't really be like well we got to stop you doing this thing that you do so it's like it's kind of never going to stop but it is like lessened now isn't it i think yeah and it might continue there's to less lessen. people you know, it really, it really does make you realize that what Japan's doing is 100% what should be done. I know. It's like the, it's like how you manipulate people. Not even like, manipulation. I'm way. actually looking at the other side of it. Like, you're right. Like, if I was sitting there and I, I haven't been in a, a workplace where I have seen half of the, the, uh, the work populace get up for 15 minutes every hour. If you're sitting there trudging away at your monotony and then you're seeing that they're not every day a lot of the time. Yeah, give me six extra days at the end yeah. of the year. Fuck yeah. Right. Because There's I've been people who go have your six days, I'll just keep smoking. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'll take out my right. fifteen minutes every yep. few hours. Yeah. But I, I think I, that's the person that would sue is what Joe was talking about. Is the person that's like, wait a minute, hold on now. Why did it, wait you in know, America I can't for quit. sure? It's hard yeah. to quit, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of interesting that they that they're like there's an incentive, but I guess it's like you know, it, it's really for their bottom line, right? Like they realize they'd save more money giving people vacation days rather than letting them go out for a break every 15 minutes or every hour for 15 minutes a day, you know, mm. or 15 minutes a day every hour. What's the word I'm trying to say? Super DVD. Super, super, super DVD. DVD. That's what I'm Damn it! I was trying to. What's the word? What's the word? Ellie, you found it. Dang. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Great name. Damn it. Really great it. name. How many super, super DVD? What are you gonna call it? Like a super DVD? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Guys, I anyway. think we did it. Yeah. We yeah. Did. did we did yeah. it? Yeah. We, we did, did it. it. We did it. Well, guys, I thank you so much was... for listening. Um. Well, hang on. Okay. I got to cut out half this episode. You really do. <laughs> Dinosaur, shit, trash, Tigger movie, trash, Fantasia 2000, keep, Toy Story 2, keep, Tarzan, trash, Bugs Life, keep, no! Mulan, keep, Hercules, keep, Hunchback of Notre Dame, keep, James the Giant's Peach, keep, Toy Story, keep, Pocahontas, keep, Goofy movie, keep, Lion King, keep, Nightmare Before Christmas, keep, Aladdin, keep, Beauty and the Beast, keep, Rescues Down Under, keep, Little Mermaid, keep, Oliver and Company, trash, Great no! Mouse Detective, trash, <laughs> no! Back Holden, keep, Fox and the Hound, keep, Rescuers, keep, Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, trash, all. Robin Hood, trash, Aristocats, keep, Jungle Book, keep, Sword in the Stone, keep, 100, 100, 100, 101 Dalmatians, keep, Sleeping Beauty, keep, Lady of the Tramp, keep, Peter Pan, keep, Alice in Wonderland, keep, Cinderella, keep, Ichabod and Mr. Toad, keep, Melody Time, keep, Fun and Fancy Free, keep, Make My Music, keep, Three Cabuleros, keep, Cabuleros. Saludos Thanks, Amigos, keep, Bambi, keep, Dumbo, keep, Fantasia, keep, Pinocchio, keep, Snow White, keep. That's it? Is that Penis all? Penis Big Movie, trash. Jungle Book 2, trash. <laughs> Finding Nemo, trash. What is the matter with you? Is that all of them? Yeah, I think we did do all of them. <laughs>